I believe one of the most powerful things that God has given to human beings is the power to make decisions. God won't force you. He, he won't walk over that. He gave Adam and Eve the ability to make decisions. Even if it's a bad decision, God will let you make it. That's why you need to learn to make good ones. Watch, I'm gonna go back into this message series when I come back. I'll tell you how you can get the entire series for your very own. So Joshua is about 110 years old. He's getting ready to die, and he's talking to this next generation of Israel. Verse, chapter 24, verse 14. Now, therefore, fear the Lord and serve him in sincerity and in truth, and put away the gods which your fathers served on the other side of the flood and in Egypt, and serve ye the Lord. And if it seem evil... That word evil in the Hebrew says good for nothing. Verse 15, if it seems good for nothing unto you to serve the Lord, <laughs> I, I can almost imagine why the translators didn't put that in in the, in, in the literal text. Oh, what do you mean? Somebody would think it's good for nothing to serve the Lord. There's all kinds of people think it's good for nothing to serve the Lord. I had a man I worked with for almost 20 years. I said something to him one day about the Bible. He said, Charlie, you know that Bible, the Bible's not true. I said, are you telling me, you're trying to tell me that the principles in the Word of God are not true? He said, no, that's not what I said. And he was trying to back up and try to think of something else he could say. He was trying to tell me that God didn't exist and Jesus didn't exist is what he was trying to say. But he couldn't defy the truth and the principles of the Word of God. If, if you don't believe in God, get you a Bible and live by the, the principles of the Word of God because there's not any any better. Right. <laughs> that's where... I don't know if you've ever listened to motivational speakers, but for a while I was kind of on a kick listening to those guys. All of them use principles from the Word of God. I've got a good friend of mine that was a pastor for years that, that got into a banking system. He started working for a banking system. And he became a trainer. And he said, I use the principles of the Word of God to train these guys with. He said, I'm not allowed to quote the Scriptures. But he said, every once in a while, somebody will come up after one of the meetings and say, that's Bible stuff, isn't it? And he said, yes, it is Bible stuff. Why? To be successful, you've got to have the truths out of God's Word and use them and apply them to your life every day. If it seems good for nothing unto you to serve the Lord, choose you this day whom you're going to serve. I, I, I want to comment on that, and I must almost, I, I don't, almost don't want to, but I want to. That, that, who's he talking to? He's talking to a group of people It's all together. He said, if you think it's good for nothing to serve the Lord, why don't you get out? Why don't you get away from us? If you think, you don't need to be perpetuating your heathen doctrine among us if you think it's good for nothing. I've met church people that say, well, I don't believe that part. Yeah, I don't, I don't believe that. You know, I don't think that's for us today. You think it's good for nothing then. You, there's some of it that you think is good for nothing. You want to pick and choose what you think is good. He said, if you think that serving God is good for nothing, he said, whether the God, did you watch this? <laughs> He said, if it seems evil, good for nothing unto you to serve the Lord, choose you this day whom you're going to serve. Make a choice. Get away from me. Whether the gods of your father, which your father served, in the land of the Amorites before on the other side of the flood, but as for me and my house, <laughs> we will serve the Lord. When I was a kid, my mom and dad got saved when I was three years old. <clears throat> and you know, kids, we just, we had three stations on TV at the time. There was no cable. That's a long time ago, isn't it? There was no cable. There was no internet. There was none of that stuff. We had three channels that you could see if you had your antenna turned the right direction. And, and uh, I remember asking mom and dad, can I stay home from church tonight? We went to church three times a week, four times a week, actually. We went Sunday morning, Sunday night, Wednesday night was our midweek. They called a prayer meeting service. And then Friday night was 
young people's meeting, that the kids came together and the whole meeting was about young kids doing stuff and learning scriptures and doing plays and what have you. So there's four, four nights a week and every once in a while I'd ask mom and dad. They said, if you're, you know, this was their response. If you're going to live in our house, you live by our rules. We're going to church. When it's church time, just don't ask, just get ready. Don't ask if you can stay home. I can't remember one or two times in my entire growing up a lifetime that my mom and dad let me stay home from a church meeting. Then I had to stay with my grandma, which was not really very fun, so I just went to church the next time. <laughs> and, and the people answered, verse 16, the people answered and said, God forbid that we should forsake the Lord to serve other gods. Interesting, verse 17, verse 18, they recounted God, brought them out of bondage, showed them great signs, preserved them, drove the Canaanites out of the promised land. See, they're in possession of the promised land now. Verses 19 and 20, Joshua said, if you forsake God and serve strange gods, you can't serve the Lord. And verse 21 says, and the people said unto Joshua, nay, no, but we will serve the Lord. Sounds affirmative, doesn't it? They're at the crossroads. You know why they're at the crossroads is because their leader is getting ready to pass away. And sometimes people only do what their leader instructs them to do. When we should always be doing what our main leader tells us to do. And he's not going away anywhere. And Joshua said unto the people, You are witnesses against yourself that you have chosen. You've decided for the Lord to, to serve him. And they said, we are witnesses. We're taking this thing upon ourselves. We've chosen the Lord. And we're a witness against ourselves if we do anything otherwise. Now therefore put away, said he, the strange gods which are among you and incline your heart unto the Lord God of Israel. And the people said unto Joshua, The Lord our God we will serve and his voice we will obey. Sounds like you could preach there, doesn't it? <laughs> Until you start reading the book of Judges, which follows this chronology, the, the, the chron, chronolo, chronologically. <laughs> Did you get that? It's coming up next is what I mean. The book of Judges. Look at the book of Judges. Judges chapter 2. The Bible continues the same story. We're not going to read an outrageous amount. I just want you to see what we're going to serve the Lord and we're going to obey the Lord, okay? Yeah, you're your own judge, right? You're your own witness. Yes, that's right. We're our own witness and we will serve the Lord. Joshua says, for me and my house. Well, Joshua, you're getting ready to die, pal. <laughs> Judges chapter 2 and verse 10. And also all the generation were gathered together unto their fathers. All that generation. Whose? Joshua's generation. And there arose another generation after them which knew not the Lord, nor yet the works which he had done for Israel. Now let me tell you what. That was generation number one's fault. Right. <laughs> if... If, if, if one generation rose up behind them that didn't know what God had done for them, that was their fault for not telling them. We should always, listen, listen, well, Pastor, you don't know what's gone on in my life. You don't know the trouble that I've had and the problem. You talk too much about your troubles than you do your blessings. If you'd start talking about your blessings, there'd be more people inclined to serve God. You, you almost make it like sometimes, I'm not talking to you guys, I'm talking to people far, far away. You, you, you sometimes make it sound like God's mean to you or bad to you because he said this is happening, that's happening. Listen, God, if you, if you learn one thing this morning, learn this one thing. God is a good God and the devil is a bad devil. Is that easy? Learn that one thing. And you need to quit giving credit to the devil all the time. If bad stuff's going on, he comes to steal, kill, destroy, Jesus said. Quit talking about stealing, killing, and destroying. Start talking about the abundant life that Jesus came to share with you. Amen. And the children of Israel did evil in the sight of the Lord and served Balaam. And they forsook the Lord... God of their fathers, which brought them out of the land of Egypt and followed other gods 
of the gods of the people that were round about them, and they bowed themselves unto them, and they provoked the Lord to anger, and they forsook the Lord and served Baal and Ashtaroth. You have to decide to follow godly instructions. That, that's a decision. You, do you remember the, the story of Job? Has everybody, anybody ever read, you ever read through the book of Job? It's a long story because the length of it is he has these friends, quote unquote, that come by and start talking to him. And they start telling him, you know the reason all this is happening is because you're a bad person. If you read the first couple chapters of Job, you find out he's anything but a bad person. This guy serves God with everything that he's got, all the knowledge that he has. He offers sacrifices not for himself only, but for his children every day, the Bible said. He's always commenting on the goodness of God and telling people about the goodness of God. And the scripture said Satan came and caused everything that was calamity in his life to take place. And now with friends like Job had, you don't need any enemies so his friends come by and begin to pick at his entire life. Just tear him up. And Job gets to the point on occasion that he just almost, it's all but forget it. Almost. And God spoke to Job and said, if you want to be healed and delivered from all of these calamities, just pray for your friends. All right, Lord, kill them just as quickly as you can. <laughs> That's not what he meant. Can you imagine? Somebody sitting around with you for days and weeks and telling you what a snake you are, how low you are, how worthless you are. Now you don't have anything. You don't have any friends around. Your kids are all gone. Your wife's an idiot. That wife was an idiot. She, she, she was a fool is what Job, Job said. You talk as a foolish woman. She said, you know, everything's messed up. Why don't you just curse God and die? He said, you speak as one of the foolish women. That means they're wise women as well, like you guys. Amen. I had three amens from the women. And, and God says, Job, you want delivered? You want restored? Pray for your friends. I'm just going to tell you, that'd be a tough, he didn't say, I'm going to make your mouth come open. I'm going to make words come out of your mouth and use you like a puppet and make you pray good things for your friends. He said, you pray for your friends if you want delivered. And Job decided, I think God knows more than the rest of these people know. So I'm going to pray for my friends. And the Bible said when he did, God restored his wealth twofold twice what he had. Gave him children again. And the Bible said that his girls, his daughters were prettier than any of the women in that entire countryside. And he lived a good old life and enjoyed family and kids and grandkids. Enjoyed it all because of one decision that he chose to make. Jonah could have kept running. See, here's a, let me make a point to you. Everybody in here has made some bad decisions. Admittedly. Some of you, not, <laughs> okay. I'm going to just make the proclamation that everyone in here has made some bad decisions, whether you want to admit it or not. Some worse than others, but all of them have had some consequences because of it. And, and Jonah already is running from God because God told him to go to Nineveh. He, if you look on a map, Jonah was headed toward Italy on a ship hundreds of miles away in the, in the, in the sea. He was doing opposite direction. And the Bible said that such a storm, you know the story of Jonah, there was such a storm 
that they threw all the stuff overboard. Now they've got an empty ship and the ship's still about to sink. And, and the captain of the ship says, everybody needs to pray to their God. You know, it's like a shotgun thing. You know, you pray to yours, you pray to yours, you pray to yours. Maybe we'll hit something. Pray to your gods and let's get delivered. And, and Jonah's sleeping. And, and they go wake him up and say, look, we're about to sink. The ship is about to wreck and you're sitting down here sleeping, laying down here sleeping. Get up and pray to your God. And Jonah, Jonah finally explains to them, you know, the, the reason all this is happening is because I disobeyed God. They said, well, okay. He said, just throw me overboard. They said, okay. <laughs> I don't think they did it with remorse. I think they were glad to get rid of him. I don't know if you've ever had a Jonah on board with you, but I have. And I, I'm telling you what, I wanted to get up and dance on the desk when they left. <laughs> Woo! <laughs> you know it. You have too. If you've ever had a Jonah in your life, so so God prepares this great big fish to swallow Jonah, and He swallows Jonah, and Jonah's in this putrid stuff for three days, and then God tells the fish go vomit him up on the shore, and let's see what kind of decision He wants to make again. We'll give him another opportunity to make the right decision. Isn't that amazing that you, everyone in here has made a bad decision and God is giving you a decision, again, yeah. giving you the opportunity again to make the right decisions. Crossroads. The valley of decision. Every day of your life. 35,000 a day. Jonah could have kept running in fact, Proverbs chapter 26 and verse 11, as a dog returns to his vomit, so a fool shall return to his folly. And all of us have met some of them. Yeah. Jonah, <laughs> Jonah was in his vomit when he came out on the shore. He could have returned to the same foolish decision. I don't care what happens to me. I'm run. But he finally made a choice. He made a decision. How about Naaman, the, the, the guy that, that, that was the captain of the Syrian army, Israel's enemies, and, and someone tips him off that there's a prophet in Israel and all he has to do is get to that prophet and he, he develops leprosy. And he said, if, if you can get to this prophet in Israel, uh, uh, you'll be healed. And he goes to the prophet's house and, and knocks on the door and, and the prophet sends his servant out and said, all you need to do is go dip seven times in the Jordan River. Your skin will be clean. And Naaman got frustrated. He said, you know what? He could have at least come out and talked to me himself. <laughs> Are you going to base your decisions on what other people do? Because if you do, you're probably going to make a bunch of bad ones. If you make your decisions on the basis of what somebody says to you, you're probably going to make a bunch of horrible decisions in your life. You can't wait for the approval of men to make right decisions. <laughs> Naaman gets up on his horse, gets ready to leave, and one of his servants says, Hey, if he had told you to do something real big, would you have done it? He said, Well, yeah. He said, Well, he just told you to go dip in the river. Why don't you just do what the prophet told you to do? And he changed his decision. And the scripture said when he dipped and came out the seventh time, he was clean. His skin was clean. God's will is not automatic in your life. He gives you the freedom to make decisions. Your decisions will do one of three things. I want to do this and I will stop today. But I want, to, I want to tell you about three things that can happen because of your decision. First, if you make bad decisions, there's always consequences. They, they might not be at that very moment. One of the reasons people think they get by with stuff, you know, we've got people that work, works and have worked in law enforcement in here for years. And one of the reasons that people do bad stuff is because they don't immediately suffer the consequences of it. it listen, if you did some, if, if you told a lie when you were a kid, and, and something hit you on the head that nearly knocked you out immediately or in the process of the lie, you wouldn't lie very much. 
But, but what you do is you're thinking, I'm getting by with stuff. If, some, if somebody knew, if they walked into a, into a convenience store to rob a convenience store, that before they got to the counter, somebody was going to shoot them and maim them and they were going to be crippled the rest of their lives, they wouldn't walk in there and do that. The, the deception with bad decisions is that there is a process of seed, time, and harvest. And it don't happen immediately. You don't get consequences. Almost never do you get consequences immediately. Sometimes we like to watch some of these shows where people do stupid stuff like try to rob somebody and somebody pulls a gun out and shoots them. That's pretty quick consequences. It is horrible. I saw a video on, on an older lady that was going into a grocery store that some guy ran up and grabbed her purse and she liked to beat the daylights out of that kid. I, I mean, he was on the ground. He was trying to, everything he could do to get away from her. She was in her 70s, I think, if I remember right. And she was beating the daylights. And she, he was not getting her purse. That stuff's funny to me. <laughs> it's probably not funny to the guy that was getting beat up. But that's very rare. It's rare that you serve that you, you're served the consequences immediately when you do something bad and make a bad decision. Proverbs chapter 1 and verse 29 tells us about the people that hated knowledge and did not choose to reverence the Lord. It says they would have none of my counsel, God said. They refused my purpose. They despised all of my correction. Therefore, they eat the fruit of their own way and they're filled with their own de de devices. Second thing is when you don't make any decisions. And I will say again, indecision is, is a decision. You, you, here's what happens when you don't make a decision is you become a product of the world system. I'm not talking about the earth. I'm talking about the system that operates in the world. You become a product of the world system if you refuse to make decisions because you're just going to flow down the stream with everybody else. Here's what Ephesians chapter 2 verse 1 says. And you hath he quickened or made alive who were dead in trespasses and sins, who in time past walked according to the course of this world. That word course is the word perpetuity in the Greek. It means it's something that is perpetual, that it starts a cycle and the cycle just continues over. And you've heard people say, there he's walking around the same mountain. He's just been walking around the same mountain over and over again. Because you choose to be indecisive, you're going to find yourself caught up in the system or the flow of the world and the world will make decisions for you. Number three are people that make good choices. That results in blessings, success, prosperity. Ecclesiastes 5 and verse 3 says, A dream comes through a multitude of business. Hebrews 6 and 12 said, Don't be slothful, slow, sluggish, lazy, stupid is what the Greek says, but be mimics of them who through faith and patience inherit the promises. I don't know if you notice this or not, but you need to notice that this, this, this was predicated upon decisions. That if, th did you hear what I just said? This, this, this is not going to do anything until a decision is made. That you've got to be a follower or an imitator of them who through faith and patience inherit the promises. It's an instruction, but you have to make a decision to do it. You, you don't just follow or imitate people that have faith and patience because they've inherited a promise. You make a decision to do that. And as much as God wants you to live in that kind of lifestyle, He won't make you live there. He, he still gives you a free will. A dream coming through a multitude of business. Get up off your do-nothing I, you know, I, I, I have no sympathy for people who say I can't get a job. Chick-fil-A is paying $14 an hour to make chicken in a deep fryer and serve it out the window to people. Don't, don't t tell me that you can't get a job. And, and, and in addition to that, if you have a vehicle that will even run, Papa John is giving people a $1,000 sign-on bonus to deliver pizzas. And everywhere you go, we drove all the way to Columbus yesterday and all the way back, and you couldn't drive a mile or two, but there was a sign up, help wanted, help wanted, help wanted, help wanted. Indecisiveness. 
sitting around. Get to, I've had people, I've had guys come to me, well, I owned a construction company. I've had several guys come to me and say, well, I'm quitting. I said, what are you quitting for? They said, I'm going to go get another job. I said, why are you going to quit before you get another job? They said, well, I don't know, never thought about it. I said, well, you should. I said, why would you quit the job you have now until you get another job? I want you to succeed in life. I want you to do better. Some of those guys, I wanted them to leave, but most of them, I wanted them to stay. You know what I'm talking about. I wanted them to stay because they were good workers. And, and a few of them actually stopped, they quit working for me, started their own company, and became very successful people. But you don't quit something good that you've got just to go hunt for something better. You keep doing what you're doing until you can do something better. I always consider it a pleasure to be able to bring these messages to you, whether it's your home, your office, wherever you might be viewing these. This series, Decisions, Decisions, is so powerful to realize that you have the power to determine your future. I want you to order this message series. It's going to change your life from the inside out. You can order one of three ways. Call the number that you see on the screen. Uh, you can uh, go onto our website or you can just write. Thank you so much for ordering the products. The money goes back into the ministry and you're helping us carry the good news of power, faith, and victory around the world. If you're being blessed by the ministry here at Empower, you can help us be a blessing to others by sowing a seed this month. Here's how you partner with us. Empowered Ministries is dedicated to reaching our world with the love of Jesus Christ. Your financial support is helping us extend God's grace to the multitudes and empowering us to reach the lost, heal the sick, feed the hungry, and to bring hope to the hopeless. Through Empowered Television, we're impacting nations by teaching believers to thrive in their calling and to live successful, powerful, and productive lives. If you're being blessed by the ministry here at Empowered, you can help us continue to do the works of Jesus by sowing a seed this month. With your gift of any size, you'll receive our monthly partner letter. And with your gift of $41 or more, we will also include a special teaching by Pastor Charles Vance that will take your faith to another level. When you become an EMT partner, you are helping us transform lives around the world. And we believe what you make happen for others, God will make happen for you. Thank you so much for your gifts of support. We appreciate you. We're praying for you every day. I believe God's going to multiply that seed back to you as a great harvest. Thanks again. I want to pray with those of you who are not born again or you're not sure about your relationship with God. Jesus loves you, has a great plan for your life. Right now is your time. That's what the scripture says. I want you to pray with me. I believe God has you watching this program on purpose. Will you say it out loud? Say this, Heavenly Father, I invite Jesus into my life. I confess him as my Lord, my master. I believe he died for my sins and Father, you raised him from the dead. Today I commit my life to you. Thank you for saving me. In Jesus' name, amen. If you prayed that prayer, minute from your heart, welcome to the family of God. We've put together a Get Started Packet for New Christians. It's our gift, it's free and post paid to everyone that's prayed with us today. You can get yours by going to our website, charlesvance.org, press the New Believers tab, fill out the information. We'll get the packet right back out in the mail to you and then get in a faith-based church somewhere. Always remember, stay in the Word. You will stay empowered.